That was a haul to get up here, but I finally made it. I want to introduce you to the future new home office, YouTube studio, whatever you want to call it. But this is it. And let me say, it's going to be awesome. For those that are familiar with my setup, I mean, you probably are wondering like, why do I, I need this? Like I have a pretty awesome YouTube studio as it is, and, and I do. Like I have actually probably the best office I've ever had in my entire life, but th there's just one issue whenever I'm in my office and the issue is my kids. Don't get me wrong, I love my kids. That's the reason why we have four kids. That's the reason why we adopted our daughter because we love kids. I just had a dream of having my own studio that I could record and have my creative space and not get interrupted. And that's what this is going to be. So I just wanna give you a little glimpse into the future, what the future is gonna look like. But now let's actually go back to the other office so I can show you how the YouTube magic is currently created. So let's go over there and find out how the magic is done right now. All right, so we are at the front of the house. We are now entering, getting ready to go into my office. So the office is where all the YouTube magic happens and you are here. So this is it. This is the office where the magic is made, where all the fun happens, where I've created probably 92% of all my YouTube videos. You might be familiar with the wealth board. You might be familiar with this backdrop, but this is where it all goes down. So today I'm going to show you behind the scenes, look at what cameras am I using? What's the lighting I use, the microphone, and also I'm going to reveal to you what is the tool that allowed me to edit in super fast time that got my first video on the YouTube trending tab. So we're gonna find out what all that is right now, but I need to jump over to the other camera so we can go ahead and get this party started. So let's go. All right, so here is what you've probably seen on most of my YouTube videos, especially here lately. And this is the setup that has taken me years to create and trying to give you a very fast track way of doing it. And also as a reminder, like you don't have to have this setup to start a YouTube channel. Like this is definitely high end, higher level. It's all about having fun and just basically using what you have. But what am I working with right now? So cameras is one of those things I just became obsessed with. I love all the different cameras, the specs, and all the different features that they offer. I will say I started off with the Canon, and this is the camera that you saw with the, uh, the intro part there. This is my primary vlogging camera. This is my Canon EOS R, and I'll talk a little bit about the lens here in a second. But for this desktop setup, I am using a Panasonic GH5. This is Lumix. And the reason I, I, I'm actually really shocked that I went this route, but they offer 4K. It's very affordable uh, and also has clean HDMI output, which the only thing you need to know about that is whenever you are uh, broadcasting to your computer, because I am recording directly into my computer now, and you don't get all the data and all the stuff that's on the screen. Uh, it's just, it comes out clean. And once again, it's super affordable. Currently, I am shooting everything in 4K. This is something that you don't have to do, you know, but right now the new iPhones offer 4K. A lot of the bigger channels are, are shooting in 4K, even though I don't think my TV currently broadcasts in 4K. But the thought for me is just, I want to future-proof my channel. To the future! I'll also show to YouTube that, you know, I'm taking my channel seriously and trying to upload the best quality video as possible. But when it really comes down to it, it really doesn't matter the camera. I mean, whether you're using a Panasonic, a Canon, a Nikon, a Fuji, like whatever camera you want to use, it truly doesn't matter. And most of the times I get questions on my setup or which camera I'm using, 
most of the comments that I get are regarding this blurry background look, which is referred to as Boca, uh, not Buka or Buka. It's I think it's pronounced Boca. Boca, Boca. That is the correct pronunciation of the term. Before we talk about bokeh though, let's talk about the size of the lens because this is really important. The lower you have on the lens, so we're talking whether it be 16 millimeter, 15 millimeter, 24 millimeter, maybe 35 millimeter, basically all you need to know if you don't know what that really means is how close does the camera or the lens need to be to your face so that you can record? So if I had a 35 millimeter lens or a 50 millimeter lens, like it would be really really, really, really far and I would need a lavalier mic or some sort of external mic hookup so that you could actually hear me. So right now with this lens, I am using a 16 millimeter lens. And just to kind of put it in perspective, I can touch the lens right now. Touching the lens, touching the lens, touching the lens. So that's how close this lens is to my face. So this is a 16 millimeter lens. Let's take a look at a 14 millimeter lens so you can see the difference. So now you're looking at a 14 millimeter lens. This is on my secondary camera, which is also a Panasonic GH5. This is 14 millimeters. It is meant to be a wide angle lens. I think this is primarily used for astrology or taking pictures of stars. But just to kind of give you a perspective, this is how close I am to this lens. I am touching it right now, right now, right now. Hey, hey, stop, 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 stop. But this just gives a huge what a field of view. Like you can, I mean, you can see everything. Uh, it looks like my arms might be kind of weird. Like I'm uh, like Gumby or... I just love the look of this lens, but this is 14 millimeters, so this can be a whole lot closer. The lens that I have on my Canon, which I primarily use for vlogging, this is a 15 millimeter lens. It goes up to 35, but the close range is 15, so that allows me to hold it about right here and where it doesn't feel like it's all up in my face, and so that's why I use that lens on the Canon. So let's talk about this bokeh now. Bokeh. Bokeh. Like this blurry background. And that all has to do what is the f-stop of the lens. And if you don't know what an f-stop is, it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to know. But if you're ever researching lens, you'll see a f slash and a number. And typically the lower the number it is, that is the more of the blurry background look that you're going to get. So for example, this is a Sigma 16 millimeter lens with a 1.4 f-stop. And that's why you have that really blurry background. By comparison, this is a Sigma 16 millimeter lens with a 1.8 f-stop. So as you can see, it's still blurry, but not as blurry as this one. As you can see, this is much more blurry and it just kind of has that cool look. Like, do you need that blurry background look? I mean, that's totally up to you. By comparison, let's look at my Canon lens, which it has a 2.8 f-stop. So this is my Canon camera now. This is a 15 to 35 millimeter lens with a 2.8 f-stop. As you can see, it is not nearly as blurry, doesn't have that smooth looking bokeh, as I think they like to say. But still, I mean, it still looks pretty phenomenal, right? I mean, it's still a great camera. Maybe not as good as this one as far as like that blurry background look, but it's still pretty dang good. A quick note on price. Anytime that you're buying a lens that has a, a low bokeh that has that blurry background look, you're typically going to pay a lot more. I will say that this Sigma lens, this 16 millimeter lens is about $400. This Sigma lens, since it's a 14 millimeter lens, this thing is about $1,200. So this one is a lot more expensive. And then you have this Canon lens, this 15 to 35 millimeter 2.8. 
This one is a pricey beast. This thing runs about $3,000. Now, I'm not sure exactly why, other than we've got some amazing autofocus, and I guess they talk about the Canon colors and all this stuff. I mean, it's, it's a pricey lens. There are cheaper alternatives, but anytime that you are paying for something that is close to your face like this, and also offers any sort of blurry background, expect to pay a whole lot more. But do you really need a DSLR? Couldn't you just use a iPhone, especially now that they offer 4K? So now I'm recording on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I think that's the one I have. This one offers 4K video. So right now I'm shooting in 4K video. I am using the selfie mode so that I can see myself right now. You're probably wondering like, man, that audio sounds amazing. That's because I'm not currently using the audio on my iPhone. Cause this is what it sounds like when I start using the audio from the iPhone. Now, this is using the straight audio from my iPhone. We still got 4K video. As you can probably hear now, the audio isn't the greatest, but there is something that you can do. For iPhones, you can buy these lavalier mics that plug directly into your iPhone. That way you have a microphone right here. You know, it's not on the phone. You don't have to deal with other background noise. You don't have to deal with wind. You have to deal with echo if you're recording inside or maybe be wind if you're recording outside. It sounds a whole lot better and there should be a noticeable difference between using the lavalier and not using it. So if you are going to be recording, you know, primarily with your iPhone, invest into one of these because it's gonna make your video sound so much better. Okay, now we're gonna talk about lighting and lighting is a big deal, especially if you have a dark office like I do. I love my dark office. I get so many compliments on it, but when you are recording a YouTube video, <laughs> it can get really dark. Now, luckily I have this huge natural window right here. So as you can see, that puts off some amazing natural light. And if you have a big window, like as you can see, setting up your recording studio right here where you got all that natural light is awesome. Now, the one thing that I didn't think through is that I've got this, this glass board behind me, as you can see, is really, really reflective. So that, that's not a very good backdrop. So for me, I have to set up my camera here. But can you see the issue? I've got a lot of light over here and I've got nothing over here. So I kind of look like, what's the, the Two-Face, the, the Batman villain? Like I got here and here. So let's take a look at my lighting situation so you can see what I did to get it right. Ah. Oh. Isn't that so much better? So now I've got the secondary light over here. And then I have this huge studio light. I mean, this thing is ginormous. It has a soft box on it. It gives this nice, natural light here so it's all nice and balanced now i didn't ever i didn't think i'd actually ever go this big but i saw too many other youtube creators that had this light and just how good it looked i also have some other you know led like square lights you know that i'll use on occasion but typically those are just smaller uh, and it just doesn't give the entire i guess fill my face where this is just it gives a natural light look and it just it's just there i mean it just looks good which hopefully you can tell the difference between having all this light as opposed to having no light. I mean, hello, where did I go? It's so dark in here. As you can see, we don't want this. Like this doesn't look good, but this does. This just looks so much better. Now you can go crazy on lighting. I will tell you that all the lights that I bought, I bought some knockoff on Amazon that was about 25% of the cost of all these other professional studio lights. So yes, you can get crazy with lighting. And as you can see, like you do need some lights, but don't get too crazy with it. But something you might want to get crazy with is that like button. Smashing that like button if you've got any value out of what I provided thus far. But here's the best part thus far. But here's the best part. I'm not done yet. But I'm not done yet. But before we go on, hit that like button and subscribe too if you haven't. Go ahead and do both of those right now. All right, we've talked cameras, we've talked lenses, we've talked lighting, let's talk about audio. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? 
Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I have tested so many different types of microphones. I have tested wired lavaliers like you saw with the iPhone. I've tested wireless lavaliers. I've tested different shotgun mics until I finally settled on the setup that you hear now. One of the biggest issues, especially when you're recording inside is echo. Now, right now I have a hardwood floor, but I have a rug, I have curtains, you know, I've got my chair over here with pillows. So I've tried to somewhat soundproof or echo proof this room. But ultimately what I figured out is having a really, really good microphone that is close to my face. So right now I am using a Rode shotgun mic. This microphone is about 18 inches from my face and I can tap it here. So this is how close it is. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? If you are using a DSLR, you don't want to use the audio inside the camera. I'm not even going to give you an example of how crappy that sounds. Trust me. So this is a shotgun mic. Now I have this hooked through some sort of audio mixer. So with this shotgun mic, it, it has what we call, I think they're XLR cables, basically the same type of cable that you would plug into a microphone. So this shotgun mic plugs into this mixer, which is like a $300 mixer, which then plugs in into the camera. And that's why you get that really crisp, that really deep bass sound with this microphone. Now compare that to the shotgun mic that I was using on my Canon that you heard outside. All right, now I'm back on my Canon. This is my Canon EOS R, same lens, and I'm still using the same microphone that you heard outside. So the shotgun mic I have here is the newest one from Rode. I think it's their Rode NTG. It was about $300. It's supposed to be one of their best shotgun mics. And I'm curious, which one do you think sounds better? Do you like this one on my Canon EOS R? Or do you like the one here that I have on my home office setup? As you can see, there is a difference between the two. The reason that I went this route was I just wanted really, really good audio and I wanted to be able to run everything through this camera. Now, the cool thing with this setup is that this microphone is the same audio source for both cameras. So it doesn't matter if I'm using camera two or camera one it's the same audio source, which makes it super easy for editing. That was the perfect segue to the next segment. Okay, let's talk a little bit about editing. I wanted to make it as streamlined as possible. With DSLR cameras, you gotta have these memory cards that you insert into the camera. This is what all your footage goes onto. And then if you wanna edit it, you take this little card and you put it inside your computer and you download it or you upload it to Dropbox or Google Drive or wherever your editor wants it. And then they take care of the rest or you upload it to your own editing software. And it's just one of those things that I didn't want to do anymore. Anymore. So the workaround in that was I wanted to record directly into my computer. Now that sounds like it would be super easy and it is if you have the right tools or the right resources. So there are a few tools that you can use right now to record HDMI directly into your computer, even at 4K. Cam Link has a product called the Cam Link 4K, which basically you just run an HDMI cable from your camera into your Cam Link USB hub that plugs directly into your Mac or your PC and all that footage goes directly into your computer. The other one that I'm testing out is made by a company called Megwell and they have their USB 4K HDMI converter. Now, right now, the time of this recording, these are hard to find because so many people have wanted to stream during quarantine time. So the Camlink 4K, which usually retails for about, I think $150, if you can find it for 200 or 300, like you're actually in luck. Hopefully they'll have more here soon. The Megwell, that USB 4K HDMI, HDMI converter, that thing sells for about $300, but it also too is hard to find. So all this footage records directly into my computer and then I can decide what I want to do with it. Do I need to get it to an editor or do I want to edit it myself? Now, in case you haven't figured this out yet, this is not me editing this video. I am not qualified to make the type of insane, awesome edits that you've seen here. No, I got to give a shout out to my main man, my main editor, Jeremiah, who is performing some of his video editing skills. Go ahead and say hi, Jeremiah. What up, Jeff? Thanks for the shout out. 
Now it's awesome if you can find an editor that has skills like Jeremiah, but let me tell you, like they are hard to find. And if you know somebody that has a YouTube channel that has a good editor, chances are they're not going to tell you about them because once you find a good editor, you don't wanna share them with anybody else because you want them just to work on your project. But what I also wanted was, I wanted to be able to record directly into my computer and make as minimal edits as possible having this two camera look. So what I needed was a tool that can make this as seamless as possible. And it's this tool that allowed me to record a video, edit it in real time, and then take it to the trending tab on YouTube. So what exactly is this tool? Oh my gosh, so okay, this video is 20 minutes long already and Jeremiah, my editor, told me, dude, you, you, got, you gotta wrap it up. We need to take this to a part two. So my apologies, I want to share with you what is the tool and the process that allowed me to go to the YouTube trending tab and I produced and edited this video in nine minutes utilizing this tool. I didn't get a chance to cover it in this video, but if you click on the little box up here, that is the video that's going to share with you what my secret tool is. So be sure to check out that video. And if you haven't yet, subscribe, all that fun stuff. All right, y'all, catch you all in the next vid. Peace.